I've been asked a lot of times down in the comments what I think of particle board. People want to know how bad it really is or if it can ever act as a substitute for other types of sheet lumber. I've done several other videos on other sheet good products, including plywood, MDF, and even OSB, but I figured it was finally time to tackle their more notorious cousin. So today I'm giving a quick rundown on how particle board is made, what you can expect of its general quality, and even how you might use it. And that's coming up next on The Honest Carpenter Show. So particle board is an engineered wood product similar in some ways to MDF in OSB. In fact, some people use the words particle board to refer to all fiberboard products interchangeably, but that's not quite right. Particle board specifically refers to this stuff. You can identify it by the chunky dry oatmeal look it has at the edges. It'll often have a veneer of some type on both faces, usually a plasticky white laminate called melamine. We see particle board everywhere we look, especially in cabinet type furniture. Companies like Ikea seem to use little else in their manufacturing. But you will also see particle board products in the lumber aisle of your home improvement stores near the other sheet goods. This often prompts people to ask, should I use this stuff for my projects? My answer is, depends on what you're building. Particle board is similar to MDF, but in many ways it's completely inferior. Both products are typically made of wood fibers mixed with glue and resins and pressed into sheets. But MDF has a much higher density of wood fibers, as you can see by the tighter grain appearance at the edge. In fact, MDF stands for medium density fiber board, whereas particle board is known as an LDF, low density fiber board. Both products contain about 10% resin or glue, but the larger, more separated fibers of particle board just don't have the strength and adhesion of MDF fibers. There aren't as many contact points for the resin binders. The overall result is that particle board is basically a weaker version of MDF. It's more prone to degradation, fracturing, and moisture intrusion. The stuff will soak up water like a bag of flour. It also has less span strength than MDF does. This is the material's ability to avoid deflection across an open, unsupported span. Anybody who's ever used it for shelving board has no doubt seen it sag ludicrously under very light loads. Also, particle board is very weak at the edge. I've mentioned before that MDF edges don't hold fasteners well because there's no solid wood in there. But particle board is even worse. If you put a screw into the edge, it might hold briefly, but any movement or overdriving will cause it to ream out the pulpy fibers. You get no fastening power this way and it severely limits how you can build with it. So why do so many large furniture companies use it? As I've said with other products, because it's cheap and in the huge quantities at which factories purchase it, particle board is substantially cheaper than ply products or even MDF. They overcome the material weaknesses by using proprietary fasteners that lock the boards together with a bit more compression. And in some cases, they use dowels and glue, which really hold about as well as screws. This lets them design and produce cheap flat pack products that can be easily assembled by homeowners with limited tools and experience. And one unseen advantage of particle board is that it actually has more surface density than wood or plywood. If you look at the edge, you'll see that it's actually layered. The core fill is a bit looser with more visible air gaps, but near the surfaces, the wood fiber is quite compact. This makes it more impact resistant than most solid wood products. So while the edges are weak and frangible, the broad faces are actually fairly durable even when they're not veneered. And weight wise, it's slightly lighter than MDF because it has less fiber overall and sometimes comes in slightly thinner dimensions. So when people ask if particle board has any usable purpose for DIYers, I'd say yes. The most important is that number one, it actually makes an excellent work surface. Melamine particle board, if properly supported, is crazy flat and smooth. This makes it a perfect choice for craft tables where you need a glossy, low friction surface. You can also clean it easily with mild detergents because of the laminate veneer. So it's kind of a hobbyist dream come true. It's actually really hard to get such a sleek, durable finish on other sheet good products. It usually requires careful veneering or finishing the surface with multiple spray coats, which is not fun or easy. For this reason, particle board is also used as a substrate for a lot of countertops. You see this in residential kitchens everywhere. Shaping or making such countertops is difficult without industrial grade tools. So making them's not a real DIY application, but you can repurpose countertops to great effect. And finally, particle board actually makes a decent sacrificial subfloor. Some people use it this way instead of more expensive underlayment like Advantech. Keep in mind, particle board subfloor is not code worthy. It's too prone to moisture damage and deterioration. No professional should be installing it. 
but it's drastically cheaper than better underlayments, about a third of the cost. So if you just need something stiff and fairly durable for a dry shop area, it can save you money and work pretty well for a while. So that's a little information for you on particle board. It's nobody's first choice for much. Plywood is far stronger, and MDF is denser, looks better, and routes cleaner. But particle board is cheap, and it does have a couple applications where it shines. Let me know what you thought of the video down in the comments, and please consider subscribing and hitting that bell button to turn on notifications. That way you'll know the moment we post something. I'm Ethan James with The Honest Carpenter. I'll see you next time.